Hi all, let's have a look at another delightful positional game from Leela. This is against Laser in TSEC Season 14 Division 1. The opening book given C4 from Leela, we go into the Leningrad Dutch defence. So a very exciting variation of the Dutch, which I've used quite a bit as well in Over the Ball Chess and Blitz. So the book moves end here. We have D4 Knight A6. Rook b1, c5, b3. This has been seen before in a game of uh, Hebden, and he won that, uh, this b3 move. Uh, we have c takes d4, knight takes d4, knight c5, bishop b2, bishop d7. So in the game Hebden against Rudd in uh, the Gatwick tournament of 2011, in this position, Rudd played the aggressive f4. We'll just have a quick look at that game for a moment. So trying to generate some uh, attacking chances maybe. Jack Rudd and uh, White was pretty solid though here it seems. d6 a target and White controlling uh, the position here actually uh, Rudd seemed to uh, resign. Uh, yeah it can be a very dodgy uh, opening uh, we have here though bishop d7 not f4 so there's a little little bit speculative bishop d7 from laser okay b4 knight c e4 because the b7 pawn otherwise would be hanging potentially so blocking the bishop hitting b7 knight b3 knight takes c3 bishop takes bishop c6 and you might find this a little bit surprising but bishop takes c6 so potentially this leaves weaknesses around but black's not in a great position to exploit these weaknesses at the moment uh, we have b5 and in fact white is focused it seems on getting a poor majority on the queen side so we have queen d7 knight a5 c takes c takes and you'll note here a two to one poor majority so a significant positional advantage potentially especially if black's extra central pawns can be suppressed or blockaded we have knight e4 and now some weaknesses are being left in black's camp after this bishop exchange knight c6 it seems pleasant enough and you can see some of these pawns maybe didn't want to commit uh, they can't go backwards black's got a pretty committed uh, position here knight c3 does queen d4 check let's put that on the board so the black king is exposed at the moment. Uh, we have rook f6. And now queen d4 pinning the rook. Knight c5. Now rook fc1. Threatening rook takes c5. So white has a really uh, luscious position here actually. A 2 to 1 pawn majority. A nice entrenched knight on c6. Black's attack really uh, is not evident here. So the loss of the light square bishop doesn't seem a big deal. We have queen b7, uh, knight a5, queen b6, knight c6. Yep, some playing around. Now a4 using that 2 to 1 poor majority already. We have again uh, some shuff shuffling. Knight c4, queen b7, knight a5, queen d7. Knight going back. Now queen d5, f4. So black is trying to be a bit aggressive now. f3, h5, king g2, f takes, h takes, rook c7. Rook b4. We have now uh, e5. Rook bc4. King h7. Knight b4 offering the exchange of queens. King g7. Rook a1. e4. The queens come off. So white still has this 2 to 1 pawn majority. And f4. Black's extra center pawn. If it's suppressed, then white really is playing with that trump card without a downside of, of the pawn majority on the queen side. Uh, we have here rook f5, e3, king f8, king h3. This prepares to answer things like g5 much more comfortably, it seems, and, and h4 potential to try and reduce the potential of black's aggression. On, for example, king f2, it still doesn't work out that well with best play, g5. White can get a good position, for example, like this. Uh, not too much of a storm. So, but King H3 looks like a safe move. So G5, Rook A2, King G8, 
rook d4 you can see that black's pawn is pretty much a target actually that pass pawn is a bit of a liability uh, we have h4 g4 the rook goes back 95 uh, here yeah with the pressure on f4 white is defending f4 more securely and ignoring d6 then for a moment to king g7 king h2 a6 this does allow this strong protected pass pawn b6 a5 now the a5 pawn could also be a liability potentially we have king h3 rook b8 rook c4 rook g8 rook b2 so there's potential now to play rook b5 or sometimes yeah other things as well so knight d3 is played now let's have a look how difficult this position is so knight d3 is pretty committal on rook b7 in fact white could actually just take on g5 here and this for example is a disaster for black where does the king go here there's a check and then uh sorry rook f6 not rook f7 uh, for example rook f6 uh, with a nice advantage so uh, we have king h7 uh, sorry after rook b2 we have knight d3 rook d2 now g takes and here there's a transition into a very nice rook and pawn ending the knights come off but black loses that d6 and now h4 is weak and there's still a very dangerous pass pawn here rook f7 yeah, on rook f3 check, this is fairly harmless for white. White just plays king takes h4, and it doesn't matter about the check there. This is just very, very good for white, a winning endgame. So rook f7, we have rook takes e4, check. The king takes here, king f7, rook e5, rook b8, rook takes a5. Yeah, two connected pass pawns. And now actually, after rook f5 check, it's ended here both engines think white is absolutely winning so it seems white didn't really have to do anything in this game except emphasize the pool majority and put some pressure in the center the the attack was kind of neutralized king h3 was a very nice move but yeah it just seems a very nice controlled positional game transitioning into an easily won end game leela made it look easy again if you enjoyed this game video, then please click on the top left box to become a member at chessball.net. You can play against other YouTubers. You can also check the YouTube analysis of this and other games from the improved menu learned from the Masters YouTube order button. Okay, comments, questions, uh, donations, see the description, like, share, subscribe with the notification bell. Really appreciate it. And there's a new t-shirt store in the description, Teespring. Thanks very much.